Hi everyone, I'm back and I want to take a moment to talk about Islamic mosque architecture and I'm showing you here an image of the Great Mosque uh, at Cordoba, uh, the plan. Uh, now as we've been reading in the pages, right, the development of mosque architecture really is modeled on its form in the Prophet's house in Medina which basically was configured around a rectangular courtyard uh, and then had a plethora of palm trees uh, that held up a thatch roof on either side. Now the Great Mosque at Cordoba similarly has several of these uh, characteristics. Uh, if we take a look here, we are seeing a plan of this mosque on the north side, we are seeing an extensive minaret, right? This is a tower that calls the faithful to prayer. And then uh, the south side here is the side that faces Mecca. So this is, would be the Qibla wall. And we can tell that this is more lavishly decorated because we have the presence of domes uh, around and near it. Now, the Great Mosque of Cordoba, right, was built in the 8th century uh, by the Umayyad Caliphate. Uh, one of the Umayyad princes was able to escape the Abbasid kind of overthrow of the um, Islamic uh, leadership and uh, escaped to Hispania or modern day Spain where he uh, established a extraordinary um, site of education and Islamic culture. Now, the Great Mosque of Cordoba is uh, huge. Uh, it covers 24,000 square feet of space, making it much larger than any Christian church, and that includes uh, St. Peter's uh, Cathedral. Perhaps it's most famous for its magnificent hypostyle hall, uh, which I am showing you here. Now we know that these hypostyle mm -hmm. halls are a common feature of Islamic mosques, right? And of course this is modeled on those palm trees uh, found at the Prophet's home. Now, uh, as you can see, this is so beautiful. There's over a thousand columns here with these beautiful multi-lobed or poly-lobed arches, as they're called, made of jasper, um, onyx, marble, and granite. And one of the really cool things about the Great Mosque of Cordoba um, is that the site was, um, before it became a mosque, was a Visigoth church. But before that, it was a Roman civic building. So we literally have kind of layers of history uh, and syncretic borrowings in this uh, uh, mosque. Uh, the actual columns themselves uh, were taken from the original Roman structure. Uh, and then the use of these uh, multicolored voissoirs, uh, that's what these guys are called, of the red um, jasper. Uh, now this was found in the Visigoth um, architectural forms and it's likely that the um, Muslims borrowed this, incorporated it, uh, and then uh, to create more height and volume in the room, they created a second layer of uh, arches on top of the bottom, uh, creating this really kind of extraordinary new architectural form of the polylobed arch, um, giving this kind of effect almost of kind of billows of uh, a sails blown by the wind. There's a very kind of light, airy effect within the hypostyle hall. And the, and the, and the idea here is that the entire 
male population of a community could gather together uh, for noon prayers um, at the communal mosque. Now let's uh, look at another feature here of this room of the mosque, um, and that is the maksara. So in these mosques from this early period, the area closest to the Qibla wall was reserved for the leadership of the community, the, um, you know, the Umayyad prince and family or so forth. And, um, and this area um, is called a maksara. And you can see here, it's very, very elaborately decorated. And all aspects of the Qibla wall are more decorated. Here is this magnificent dome that is found uh, in front of, of that uh, wall, also making it more distinct than any others. You can see this kind of multi-pointed star. Uh, we know that the uh, Islamic world favored an iconic imagery uh, in their religious monuments, religious texts, and so forth. And so we get this kind of very, very elaborate um, kind of geometric formed uh, design or organic form as well. Um, also, if you can see here on the meat, on the um, uh, Qibla wall itself is a mihrab. This is a niche inside of the wall, usually a semi-circular set inside of the Qibla wall uh, that distinguishes it uh, from the other walls uh, within a mosque. Uh, and um, uh, this is usually found in a mosque. The maksra not necessarily will be there, but it's because that is that reserved area for uh, the leadership that is um, present in these older, more elaborate, certainly royal mosques. 